following table is the frequency distribution for the amount of hours worked by all 100 students in a biology class. Uh, and what are we doing here? We first want to determine if it's population or sample data. Very important when you're doing things like calculating uh, standard deviations and, and uh, variances and stuff like that. Um, and then we want to calculate a mean variance standard deviation. So this is grouped quantitative data. How do I know it's grouped? Well, we have these classes. We have the, the, the observations zero all the way up to anything less than four grouped together. Then four all the way up to anything less than eight grouped together. So this is grouped quantitative data. And here we have the frequencies for each class. Now, first questions first, are they population or sample data? Well, we know they're population data because of this keyword. Uh, all 100 students in a biology class. When you're talking about, uh, or excuse me, when your data set includes everybody with a certain characteristic being enrolled in a biology class, for instance, you're working with population data. Okay, so you always want to determine if you're making, if you're working with population or sample data before you start making calculations, because that will affect some calculations. So this is population data. So we're going to have to use our population formulas uh, here in just a moment. Now we want to calculate a mean variance and standard deviation. So let's look at the formulas really fast. Of course, if you have a calculator. Uh, your calculator can do some of this for you. If, you. if you know what buttons to push, I'll work it out by hand. So since we are uh, working with uh, population data, it's going to be mean is going to be sim uh, symbolized by the symbol mu. So mu is the mean. It's going to be the sum of the m times f's over capital M. And where M stands for midpoints. We're going to have to calculate the midpoints in just a moment. Now, variance is going to have the symbol sigma squared. And one of the ways to calculate variance is to take the sum of the M squared times F's, subtract off the sum of the m times f's squared divided by n divided by n like so. That's usually referred to as the shortcut formula. Then of course once you have your standard, excuse me, once you have your variance the standard deviation is simply the square root of variance. So once we calculate this to get the standard deviation, whose symbol is just a plain sigma, since we're working with population data, it's the square root of sigma squared. Okay, so basically uh, to do these three things, we need to know what the sum of the m times f is, and we need to know the sum of the m squared times f is. So for both those calculations, we need midpoints. So you know, if you want to add another chart, another um, another column to your chart, it's probably not a bad idea. Let's just call that the M for midpoint column. Now, how do you calculate midpoints? They're not hard. You just take your two class limits. So here, four and zero. You add them to divide by two. So zero plus four divided by two is two. Then you do the same thing for each of your classes, for each of these rows. So 4 plus 8 is what, 12? 12 divided by 2 is 6. 8 plus 12, that's 20, divided by 2 is 10. Uh, 12 plus 16 uh, is what, 28 divided by 2 is 14. What do you notice here? 2, 6, 10, 14. The difference is all 4 each time. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 4 is 14. That's because the class width up here is 4. So if you want to, you can just add 4. You know, we know the next one's going to be 14 plus 4, 18. Uh, the next one's going to be here. Oh, that's a little too spaced out. 18. Then add 4 again, you get 22. 
Then add 4 again, you get 26. Uh, add 4 again, you get 30. Add 4 again, you get 34. Add 4 again, you get uh, 38. Oh, I need to fix that one real fast. 34, 38. Now, then the last one, you add 4 again, you get 42. But again, if you want to, if you want to do it, you know, by a formula, let's say, you would do 40 plus 44 would be uh, 84 divided by 2 gives you 42. So there are our midpoints. So uh, we need to calculate the sum of the m times f's. Now we're going to use a calculator for this, but just to show you, uh, you know, what it would be if you were going to write it out, the sum of m times f's means you multiply every m times its corresponding f. So here 2, where you know, f stands for frequency, so 2 times 10 plus, of course sum means to add, so you're going to add up every pair of m times f. So then you have, what, 6 times 6 is the next m times f, then we're going to add each pair, uh, then we have, what, uh, 8 uh, m, so 10 times 8, and so forth. And you're going to work your way down the list. So let's see what that ends up being if we use a calculator. So let's see. The first m times f we said was 2 times 10. So 2 times 10 plus, then we have 6 times 6 plus uh, the next one was 8 times 10 plus then we have what uh, 14 times 6 plus 18 times 11 plus 22 times 12 plus 26 times 14 plus 30 times 10 plus 34 times 8 plus 38 times 13 Plus, finally, 42 times uh, 2. So this is the sum of all of the m times f pairs. Looks like 2196. Now, that's one of the pieces we need to make these calculations. In fact, it's, it's enough information, I suppose, to go ahead and, and find the mean. But let's, let's get the other piece of information we need, which is the sum of the m squared times s. Okay, so this is a, a similar calculation, a, a little bit more involved, but, but not much. Um, so with this one, we are going to do the sum of the m squared f's. Now we're going to square each of our m terms, then multiply by the f, then add all the results. So the first m is 2, so we're going to do 2 squared times the frequency 10. Plus 6 squared, the second midpoint, times the frequency 6. So times 6. Plus the third midpoint is 10, so 10 squared times its corresponding frequency is 8, plus follow the pattern, and let's see what we get. Again, this is just a job for your calculator. So let's see, uh, we're going to do 2 squared, 2, and then the little squared button, if you have a, a TI calculator, will be up, up in this area. So 2 squared times 10, plus 6 
squared times 6 plus 10 squared times 8 plus 14 squared times 6 plus 18 squared times 11 plus 22 squared times 12 plus 26 squared times 14 plus 30 squared times 10 plus 34 squared times 8 plus 38 squared times 13 plus 42 squared times 2. Enter. 61,616. Be careful not to confuse, uh, say, like this term, the sum of the m uh, squared times f's, sorry, the sum of the m f's in parentheses squared. Don't get that confused with this because they are going to be completely different values. Okay, let's just look at it really fast while we're here. Uh, you know, the sum of the m f's in parentheses squared, that means do this first do the stuff inside the parentheses, then square it. So we know that the stuff inside the parentheses is 2196. So this is equal to 2196 squared, which ends up being uh, another much bigger number though. Uh, let's see, that's four. Four eight two two four one six four eight two two four one six. So what? Uh, four million eight hundred twenty-two thousand four hundred sixteen. Okay, now we are ready to calculate everything we need to. Oh, oh wait, sorry. One last thing. N. What is N here? Capital N is always your population size. So capital N is one hundred. Okay. Now, all we have to do now to make these three calculations uh, is to plug in and use our calculator to simplify. So mu is the sum of the m times f's, 2196, divided by capital N, 100. Well, divided by 100, that's easy. Just move the decimal place twice to the left, so you get 2196. So there is the mean for these grouped quantitative data. Okay, of course, always round how you're asked to round. Here, the, the exact answer it, it stops at two decimal places, so that's fine. If it, if it had been more decimal places, we wanted to round to three as the directions say. But here, that answer is fine. Now, what about sigma squared, sorry. So the variance is sigma squared, so we plug into this formula. It says the sum of the m squared f's, which is this value here, 61,616, minus, you do the sum of the m f's squared, which we calculated to be this really large number, 4,800, uh, and, oh, I said that wrong, 482, oh, yeah. No, I was right, 4,822,444. Uh, divided by n, so divided by 100, then the entire thing divided by 100. Okay, so what do we get? This ends up being, and of course, this is just a job for your calculator. 
Um, so what I would like to do probably is do parentheses. You know, so when, when you're typing this in your calculator, you have to do it correctly. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong answer. Since, since it's just 100 on the bottom, if we put parentheses right here, that'll do the trick for us. So 61,616 minus 4,822,416 divided by 100. I suppose we could have done that in our head. Then divide that by 100. So the calculator is going to do this division first because it's the first division inside the parentheses, then do subtraction, and then divide that answer by 100 according to the order of operations. So it looks like our variance, sigma squared, is going to be 133.9184. Uh, of course, we want to round this to three decimal places So uh, for, the, for the final solution. So here, when you're entering your answer, make sure if, if this was your answer, to enter 133.918, since that 4 in the fourth place uh, does not mean you round up the third place. You just leave it as an 8. Now, what is the standard deviation? Well, the symbol for that is just a sigma. And the standard deviation is always super easy to get once you have the variance. So you just take the square root of variance. So we're going to take the square root of 133.9184. And so the square root button on a TI calculator, hit the second and then, this, and then the square button. So it's that little symbol right there. You can see second x squared gives you the square root button. And then just type in 133. Point. You know, actually, here's, here's a little trick for you. If you have a TI calculator, don't bother with typing that again. Hit second uh, negative sign down here, and that will just recall the previous answer. So you don't have to worry about you know making a typo when you type this, especially if this happens to be like a really long number. It's not really a big deal here, but if this happened to be like a 133.9184 blah 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 blah, well just hit the second negative button and it will retype all that for you. And there is our standard deviation. Now, we again, we want to be really careful to round this uh, to three places in this case. Again, according to the directions, always look at your directions. 11.572 is going to be our rounded version. 5.72. So, again... Not a big deal. It's just a matter of keeping track of a bunch of steps and not making any arithmetic errors along the way. So just to recap, we calculated the midpoint of each class. We then calculated the sum of the m times f's, the sum of the m squared f's, and the sum of the m f's squared. And then we simply uh, substituted into these formulas and rounded appropriately. Appropriately, this was the mean, variance, and standard deviation of grouped quantitative data. Hope this helps. Talk to you soon.